And where we really got exposed was on wind farms. Yes. Totally different type of load. So compression connectors started failing all over the place. You want to know what the reason was? What? People weren't wire brushing. <laughs> they weren't wire, wire brushing the, the got conductors. Get, getting lazy. Well, you know, they just didn't know. Like I said, it's not the installer's fault because they don't, unless you can teach them and tell them, they don't get it. But if you took it, the inside of a compression connector, it's nice and smooth. If you look inside a shear ball connector, see those transverse grooves? Mm -hmm. They're sharp. They're like razors. They bite down into the conductor. So people say, well, why don't they just put those inside a compression connector? Because if you did, if you bored out inside a compression connector, when you crimped it, it would crack. Mm -hmm. It wouldn't work. You can't do it that way, right? Because it's a soft metal. Mm -hmm. They were going to crack and break. So you'd have to make it harder to put those transverse grooves in there. So if you look at these, and if you want to go from a crimp standpoint, consider each of those a crimp. Now look inside of all those transverse grooves. There's probably 30 of those in there. Each one is a point of contact. So the more points of contact I have, the less resistance. The less resistance, the less heat. Mm -hmm. The less heat, the longer the accessory will last. Yeah. So when we went out and changed all those compressions with Seacon shear ball connectors, they ran cool.